All right then, Wagwan people, how we doing? Nice to have you back again. It's another episode of Douchebag Bartender, your friendly neighborhood bartender out here showing you how to make some sick ass cocktails in your humble home. Um, Today we're gonna be looking at how to shake. So the science, the sweet science, the methodology, what you need to learn to be able to concoct delicious libations. Uh, You know, you're gonna have to loosen up those biceps, get everything fresh and ready. Uh, We're gonna make a few drinks, so we'll quickly go over those, revisit some of the equipment that you're gonna need. And yeah, man, it's gonna be delicious. I'm super duper excited. Managed to pull through a couple of special guests as well and whatnot. So yeah, here we go. As always, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit me up on the comments, send me a message, find me out there in the wonderful world wide web you hit me with a question man i'm guaranteed to answer back i ain't really got much else going on at the moment apart from trying to make these sweet ass videos for you so yeah here we go all right then gang so jasper the cocktail dog looks pretty excited which means it's time for us to show you that sweet sweet science of how to shake a cocktail So we're gonna make a few cocktails. They're all really simple, three ingredient cocktails, nice and easy. So we're gonna start off with a Tommy's margarita, and we're gonna make a daiquiri and a whiskey sour. Really, really simple cocktails, but the point is that they're just three ingredients, so it's a great place to teach yourself how to shake. You don't have to use too much, and then it's also a good way to learn what kind of flavor profile you like in your cocktails when you get to start. Are you a very sharp person? Do you like it sweeter? Do you wanna get more pronounced flavor of alcohol we'll see what you like so we're going to make the tommy's margarita in a two-piece shaker and then we're going to use the three-piece cobbler shaker to make the daiquiri Uh, daiquiri is like a really really good uh, nuanced simple cocktail just three ingredients simple syrup lime juice and white rum and again like finding the perfect balance for this drink is completely subjective to the individual so maybe you're going to like your cocktail sharper or you're going to like it sweeter or you're gonna like it a little bit more boozy. This is the kind of drink that you can use to play around and find those variants. And literally just one or two milliliters will make a big change. And then we're gonna make a whiskey sour where we add proteins or fats to a cocktail. In this case, it's egg white. And we're gonna show you how to dry shake and emulsify and mix all those ingredients together. So we're gonna start off with our tins and then we're also gonna need a fine strainer for the daiquiri because we're gonna be serving that up in a coupette without any ice and we don't want any of those ice chips coming out. We're also gonna use a measure of course to measure all of our ingredients, get that precision, make everything beautiful and delicious. And then we're also gonna need a hawthorn strainer for a two piece shaker to be able to strain off the shaken ice and get just the liquid out. We don't need it for the cobbler shaker because it's already got one in there. So yeah, let's get things going. Wicked, and here we go. So we've got the beautiful Tommy's Margarita here. One of my favorite three ingredient cocktails. We're gonna start off with some delicious 100% agave tequila, some fresh lime, and some agave syrup as the sweetener for you. Uh, And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of those ingredients together, add them all into the small tin, and then we're gonna put our ice in the big tin, combine the shakers together, and then we're good to go. So we're starting off with a 50 mil measure, 50 milliliters of 100% agave tequila, and then we've got a 25 ml measure of freshly squeezed lime juice and then for the agave syrup we're going to go in for about 20 21 ml now the reason why i go a little bit heavier on the agave normally you'd only want to go about 15 ml but the reason why i do that is because the agave syrup is very very dense and when we build a cocktail in the shaker tins we want to start with the cheapest ingredient first so that if we make any mistakes, we can throw away those cheaper ingredients and we're not wasting any alcohol or any of the expensive ingredients. With agave syrup, it's a very, very dense, thick, sweetening liquid. Um, So it really sticks to the inside of the jigger. When you're working behind a cocktail bar and you're using a cocktail jigger, um, you can find that if you're doing precise measurements inside the jigger with something like agave syrup, it's gonna get stuck to the inside of the jigger and it's gonna be hard for you to pull the full amount out. So we use the syrup first 
and then we add the citrus over the top to kind of rinse out the, that part of the jigger and get all the agave syrup out of the measure. And you can see when I'm pouring it, how thick it is when it's coming out and how hard it is to make sure I get every single drop. You've worked so hard to build the balance of this cocktail by getting precision. So something like not accounting for the weight and the density of something like a syrup ingredient is gonna be really frustrating at the end of it. So we're gonna use the lime juice here to rinse out the measure that we've used for the agave syrup in the same way that we would when we were using a jigger behind the bar. It's gonna create that same effect. And I'm just gonna swirl this one around a little bit just to loosen up the agave syrup and add it to our small shaker tin. And then we're gonna move on real quick after we know that even after rinsing out the lime juice, you can see that there's still a little bit of agave syrup left in there. So again, going a little bit heavier with the measure means that you're not gonna lose the balance of the cocktail when it comes to pouring it out. So now we're ready to move on to our delicious 100% agave Blanco or Silver tequila. Um, always, always look for 100% agave, guys. I'm not really caring about brands at this stage of the game, but you've got to go for quality here. 100% agave, otherwise your head's going to be absolutely banging the next day. So we're going to get that guy in and then we're ready to prepare our tins to combine together. We got all the ingredients in here. I just like to swirl them again, just because that agave syrup is super dense. It's gonna help combine the alcohol and the citrus so that when we shake, we're making sure that we're not losing any of the ingredients inside the tin, just getting smashed to the inside and not coming out when you try and shake. So the reason why we add the big ice to the big tin is because when you add the ice to the small tin, there's already some liquid in there, especially when you're working fast, you can find that you splash some of the cocktail mix out of your small tin, which again, when you've been working really hard to balance your cocktail, it's gonna be very frustrating. Just like when you haven't tempered your ice long enough and you need to pull it out with your hand. Of course, I am the only one drinking these drinks uh, and I have washed my hands, so don't worry, no one's gonna get sick in this venue. So now we're gonna add the ingredients from the small tin into the big tin, create our seal, and then we're absolutely ready to go. No spillages, no splashing, and no banging on the countertop and destroying the furniture setup. So let's get into it. It's time guys, we gotta put these tins together, create our super tight air seal and get our sick shake on. So we're gonna pour the ingredients from the small tin over the ice in the large tin. And then we place the small tin on top at a slight angle and press and twist the two tins together. Twist them in opposite directions. So the small tin in one direction, the big tin in the other and press at the same time. And then a nice tap just to ensure that you've created that air seal. And then with both hands on either end of the tin, tins, just go ahead and give it a super, super duper good shake. Um, apologies for my creepy stare. This is one of the first times that I've ever filmed myself shaking a cocktail, so not something I get to see very often. Uh, but yeah, you want to shake it super duper hard until you get a nice frosting chill on the outside of the tin, and you will be able to feel it in your hands once you get super cold. Tap the side of the tins with it in one hand and then with the edge of your fist in the other, and you'll feel a pop, you'll feel the air seal open up, and you can just lift that top tin off and now that delicious drink inside is ready to pour. Now you're ready to pour, place the Hawthorne strainer on top of the big tin, rest your index finger across the top of the Hawthorne strainer and grip the tin with the remainder of your hand, nice and tight, and then pour your drink nice and fast and confidently. Shake the tin so you make sure you get every single last little bit of that delicious cocktail out of the tin and go straight into your glass with no ice. Sometimes when you pour over the top of ice, there can be little divots in that ice cube that'll mean that the drink will splash out of the glass and then you've got some wasted cocktails. So add ice to your drink afterwards with a nice pair of tongs or maybe you've got an ice scoop instead. Don't forget to add any garnish. I like to add a little lime wedge with mine. And then you are ready to sip.
All right then, wicked. So Tommy's margarita all done. We're gonna move on to the daiquiri in the three piece cobbler shaker. We've got our fine strainer here as well because we're gonna be serving this one up with our ice. So we don't want any of those little ice chips floating on top of the drink. Uh, so yeah, real simple ingredients for this one. You've got a two to one simple syrup. I've got 15 mils here. Um, two to one just means two parts sugar to one part water. You can change the ratios if you want something that pours a little bit faster, but I want that richness in the drink. Uh, and then we're also gonna move on with 25 mil of freshly squeezed lime juice. I normally pre-squeeze and strain my lime juice so it's easier to pour and better measure. And we're gonna do it the same way, replicating the sort of washout technique as we did before. And then we We've got some delicious 40% white rum. You always wanna go 40% with your rum because then you're gonna get a better balance between the citrus and the sugar. Anything lower than that, it's gonna get a little bit washed out by these strong flavors. And this is a nice, light, bright cocktail. So we've got our main body of our three-piece cobbler shaker. We're gonna add our cheapest ingredient first, which is our two to one simple syrup. And then we're gonna replicate the uh, action of rinsing out the jiggers by adding the lime juice to the measure that had the simple syrup inside of it, helping to rinse out any last little droplets of the syrup that was left inside from the first pour. Uh, make sure that's all nice and in there. And then we can move on to our lovely white rum. A light rum or an unaged rum is what you wanna go for for this cocktail. Like I said, it's a really light, bright and fresh green cocktail. Uh, it's super, super easy to drink. Like I said, that sort of sugar, citrus and booze combo is like a boozy lemonade. It's absolutely delicious. Um, so now we've got all the ingredients together, we would add ice to the main body and then add the second part of the shaker, the middle part of the shaker, pressing down tightly and then adding the cap. Your thumb on the cap and then gris gripping the rest of the shaker with your hand. You've got the top part held with your finger and then the rest of it with the rest of your hand, and sort of pinching them together while you use your other hand to hold the other base of the shaker to create a seal and make sure that you don't splash it on yourself. So here you go. You need to be a little bit more rhythmical with this one and because of the small size of the vessel, you need to shake for a little bit longer. So go to town, don't be scared. So you're smooth like Casino Royale, time to strain. Get your fine strainer, position it over the top of the glass, keeping it out of the drink, and then just pour through the fine strainer as fast as you can. Good shakes to get every last drop of that delicious drink out. Tapping the edge of the shaker, some of that liquid gets stuck to the ice chips, and you're good to go. So let me talk a little bit about the science of shaking, guys. Listen, there's no cool way to do this, especially when you're starting out. You need to get some amazing extension in your arms. It's all about rhythm, it's not about power. Think about throwing your moves on the dance floor or making love to the person of your dreams. You wanna get that sync zonal flow. You wanna get your heart and soul into this. This isn't about sweat and blood and tears. This is about heart, body, mind and soul. You wanna have an epiphany while you're shaking your cocktail. You don't wanna have a heart attack, you know what I mean? So yeah, putting a lot of life and love into your shake. You wanna put a smile on people's face. Maybe you're lucky enough to have an insanely cute niece that looks a little bit like Boo from Monsters Inc to help you, but we don't all have that luxury. So just put a lot of thought and a lot of love into what you're trying to do. Like I said, it's not about power, it's not about aggression. Once you feel comfortable and you've conditioned your arms a little bit, then you can really start to work on your rhythm and your style. So just a quick mention when you're using any proteins or fats in the drink, just gonna throw together a whiskey sour here. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna add all your ingredients as you would, including the proteins or fats, and then you wanna dry shake or shake without ice. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna emulsify the ingredients together and create this lovely textural foam on the top of your drink that when you then have the cocktail and you shake it properly with ice the second time around, you're gonna have this lovely creamy velvety drinking experience which is really gonna elevate your cocktail to the next level. 
So I owe my little cocktail gurus while we watch this delicious whiskey sour settle. Just to let you know, all the recipes for all the cocktails we made today are in the description of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe the page and hit me up in the comment section. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.